Today I'm going to show you how to create this interactive and visually appealing tab navigation prototype in Figma. We're going to break down this process and go step by step to achieve this result. You can see that it has hover state as well as press down state. So it, you know, it feels very light to interact with this. It feels very uh, natural and also is visually interesting, which is always useful. And just a quick reminder, if you're primarily looking for downloading the source file for this, if you want to reuse this in your projects, uh, definitely check out the link below, which will take you to my store where I offer the source file, the project file for this, as well as other projects and other videos at a very affordable price. So if, if you just want to reuse this and don't want to spend the time rebuilding this from scratch, visiting the Mappy Design Store definitely makes sense for you. For those of you who are here to learn how this is done, let's get started. So let's start by creating a test screen. And this test screen is going to have 1000 by 600 pixel dimensions. So this is where our uh, tab navigation will live. This is where, where we will test how it works and kind of click through the stuff. And also it's gonna be dark gray right here. And um, we're gonna start by creating a, by creating one of the tabs. So I'm gonna go to the text tool and then say page one. And we're gonna change the font to Roboto. And also it, it's not gonna be all caps. We have to specify that here. And the font size is gonna be 16. And we will select the text and then press Shift A to add auto layout and name this tab button. We're gonna also turn this into a component and adjust the padding horizontal and vertical to about this much. We're gonna create a variant and then we're gonna create another variant. Then we're gonna select the whole component and go here to rename our property one to state and these states are going to be default and press. And we're all, we also, since, since the tabs are going to be on a dark background, we can set the background of the component to dark gray as well. It's also good to note that when you actually change, when you actually add a background to a component set, this doesn't affect the individual components. So these stay transparent. It's just the group as a whole is getting a new background. We will change the font color to white. We will add rounded corners to this button. And we also need to think about these states. So um, I would say that when you hover over, I think we sh should be seeing like a very subtle highlight. So like the background is gonna li lighten up, light up a bit. And um, I'm gonna play around with the background of this button a little bit to make it more visually interesting. I would say that I add like, you know, adding just a solid background is a bit boring. So why don't we create something like this in combination with transparent background. We could even play around with the colors. So we could like test if we want to use the cyan as a highlight. I don't know, what do you think? I think this looks, this looks good. Maybe we want to increase the paddings of these because this looks a bit tiny. So why don't we change that to 20 and 14 for all of these. In terms of when it's being pressed, I would go for like a darkening of the background. The idea here being that when you hover over the element, it's gonna, you know, kind of move closer, which means kind of to the front, which means lightening up. And then when it's being pressed, it creates like a dent, which will mean that, you know, it kind of darkens the area of the button. Again, we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna play around with a gradient in combination with a solid background like this. We're gonna move that to the bottom. This doesn't seem right to me, so I'm just gonna adjust. I think we should add like inner shadow, something like this. Kind of make it look as if it's, you know, now this really looks like an actual dent, um, which is what we want. We could add a shadow, a drop shadow to this. I mean, we could do like cyan as well. Let's see if that works. We have to be careful to make this you know, visually interesting, but not distasteful at the same time. So what this means is that basically you're gonna 
want to these all these visual effects you're going to want to make them really subtle um, so that you don't overwhelm and oversaturate the user and their eye maybe you want to you know like add a stroke this is all nice and fancy but if we actually test this out and we're going to see that it just looks weird we we might remove all these effects so don't uh, you know whenever you do this type of stuff don't uh, like just don't force it just see what works see if your ideas you know are um, good if they if they are nice to interact with if they are not scratch it remove it and forget them that's my advice um, that's like a frequent beginner mistake you grow too close to your designs I think and that's not that's not useful for anyone um, definitely not useful if you want to create a design that works all right so we have a nice looking glass looking hover effect um, yeah maybe you want to keep this shadow black not actually cyan so that it looks you know really as being hovered over this is a kind of pneumorphic uh, or skeuomorphic feel this all this has this is definitely not for everyone but i have found that you know really paying attention to making these effects subtle enough looks really good but as i said it's it's uh, it's not for everyone um, and some people absolutely hate it but I, I i like it i mean look at this doesn't this look cool doesn't this look like the actual thing I think it does. We're gonna add another stroke. This one's gonna be black, but it's gonna be radial gradient and it's gonna come from the top like this. Yeah, so if you, um, so what's interesting is that when I actually read some books about uh, visual design, is that it's easier for the human eye to consider light uh, coming up from the top or the top left direction. So whenever you kind of mimic the light, going from like the, the top or the top left that's gonna almost always seem more natural than light coming up from other directions and i mean at least for me it's true i think i think that it it really it really works like um i have found that when i when i tested you know let's 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 take this and let's test let's move this shadow as if the light were coming from the, the top it's, it still looks kind of uh, natural it still looks good but i think because you are because this gradient makes it look look as if the light is coming up from from the, coming down from the bottom so that kind of matches the position of the shadow on the top so the effect is not really in it's not really in full effect right here but uh, yeah i still think it's uh, still easier for me to kind of look at this and say oh that's something that's hovering but maybe I, maybe this is like uh, this depends on uh, being used to it that's what i like about design that there is a lot of room for subjectivity and originality uh, there are very few things that are strictly given but when they are you bet you don't want to break the rules like for example contrast like contrast of text that's that's a rule you don't want to break because then maybe for like decorative purposes but when you're doing like ux you don't want to bend this rule so we have a default state we have a hover state and we have a pressed down state we're gonna define the interaction so when you're here it's while hovering you move to this state hover and then from here if you mouse down you go to this state and then from here when there is like mouse up when you re release the mouse button it should go back to this state so let's uh, let's launch the prototype actually see if this works so I'm gonna alt and drag this yeah and it's a smart animate maybe when i look I'm, when i'm looking at this i think this i think this looks i think this works i think this looks good the issue that i have with this is that when you actually press down and then release it's gonna immediately revert back to the hover state what i would suggest is let's make another state that's gonna say uh, this state is gonna be called after release right so after release and that's in terms of prototyping it's it's gonna you know when we release when the mouse up is released from this pressed state it's gonna move here and then 
since this is not connected to the hover state, only after the mouse leaves this state, it's gonna revert back to this one. So visually, there is not gonna be any change, uh, but if you want to get back to the hover state again, you first have to leave the element and then go back, right? That's the intended, let's test if this works. So I press down, it's being pressed down and release, and then no hover. I have to leave the element and then go back to trigger the hover state again. All right, so this is good. So what's, what I think could be done better here is I think we could first differentiate the button a bit when it's on its own and then make this slider, sli make this lighter when it's being pressed down. The shadow is gonna be like 15% opacity and the, the background is gonna be like 7%, something like that, yeah. I think that that works. I think that works. And we could, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause that decision for now. We're gonna test and see if if when we actually assemble the tab, if that's gonna work well with our idea. I'm gonna increase the font size to. We're gonna also increase the paddings. I just want to make this more prominent. Yeah, I like this. I like this more. Awesome. Um, yeah, so you can see that we've established a sort of circle here. So that's the singular tab button. But then now we have to actually define the tab. And that would mean use, uh, creating a new component based on this component. So we kind of have to do a nested component type of thing. So we're gonna just copy this. We're gonna do five tabs. What do you think? I th yeah, I think five tabs seems about right. Um, we're gonna take all of these, shift A to add auto layout. We're gonna name this tabs and we're gonna turn this into a component. And right now, if we kind of make a new instance of the component, we place that on our screen, we get, we get this, right? It's like a set of tabs. And I completely forgot that we also have to create an active state. So this means actually breaking up the connection between the after release. We're gonna also name this to active, right? And then we're gonna remove the connection back to the initial one. And now we will create the final look of when it's actually being active, when we are on that given tab. So I think it should definitely have this background. I think that's something that should definitely be there, you know, to kind of have this highlight. We, we might want to consider a stroke. Um, hmm, maybe make this more subtle and highlight the text in some way. So maybe we could do like a drop shadow. I'm just kind of experimenting with how to signal visual importance. Yeah, so right now we can enable all of this, which is actually something that we don't want. So we're gonna remove the connection from this. That's not gonna be automatic. We will have to define, you know, this state is not gonna be accessible purely from pressing a button, but it will have to be within the context of these tabs. And so we want to create six variants of this tab module. We want, to create a, we want to create a variant where everything's empty, then when it's on tab uh, on one, then two, then three, then four, and five. And also we want to highlight, you know, switch this to active, kind of correspond. So oh, this one's gonna be active, this one's gonna be default, default. And also we want to add a fill to this component. And then we're gonna also create our highlighter. Now we're gonna create a rectangle that's completely rounded. It's gonna be cyan, so 0, 0, F, 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 F. And um, we're gonna paste that inside this auto layout, uh, but we don't want to be kind of a regular member of the auto layout. We want to enable absolute position for this. And we're gonna want to align this. Well, first of all, this initial state, when nothing is selected, we'd want to have kind of a tiny, tiny uh, base of this highlighter. It's gonna be in the middle position and it's not gonna be visible, right? Then we want to paste this element into all of these. We first have to uh, rename this highlighter and then take this, copy and paste so it's all in all of these other variants and now we want to kind of take this and position that beneath the corresponding 
thing as being highlighted. So in this case, it's gonna be under page one. Uh, well, all of this is page one, but we're gonna do that later. And this is gonna be visible and it's gonna be wide. I'm gonna have like 80 pixels, maybe wider. Let's go all the way to 120, cover the whole width of the tab. Yeah, I think this works. We have to do the same for the highlighter here. So it's gonna be 120, it's gonna be visible, and it's gonna go under this, right? Repeat here, 20, 100, like that. So let's test how this feels. Yeah, so we have like the second one selected, but then you can't really hover over the first one. Yeah, it doesn't make sense because you can't go from the first page to the, f from the second page to the second page. So that's not really an opportunity there for interaction. That's, uh, I'd say that that's correct. And we're also gonna want to change this interaction from mouse down to while pressing, right? So this doesn't happen. So, um, so this is still an issue that we have like the hover effect after we press it, but we're gonna have to solve that once we actually have a working tab switcher. And so maybe we would like, I think we'd want to make the white a little bit softer. So I think we could like decrease the opacity a little bit to just very, very subtly, but this much. Yeah, and while we're at it, we'll also rename, we're gonna select all of these and then go to content and change that to page two. Again, select all of these, it's gonna be page three, not 13, but three. And also this, page four, and page five. Maybe we want to decrease the height of this highlighter to two. I think that seems more, yeah, I think this fits, fits better with the, uh, the rest of the design. So right now we're gonna create the individual pages. So this is a test screen. We're gonna create, like go to text tool and say page one, right? Um, we're gonna use Balboa, Balboa condensed, page one. This is like a mock-up of some content on the page. So I'm gonna go and select the rectangle tool and I'm gonna position that right here, select this color and also making the background of the page darker. You're gonna see why. I'm gonna duplicate this, decrease the height to two and then I'm just gonna make that white with partial Opacity. So this is what this is what it looks like now. Maybe even more subtle. And now we will actually place this element onto. So this is going to be aligned with this rectangle. For now, this is going to say home as the initial page. So home, or we're going to start at page one. That makes that that actually makes more sense. Yeah. So page one, and the state of this module is going to be, of course, one. So we are on page one. Page one is selected. And yeah, we also need to move, since we decreased the size of the selector, it's not all the way at the bottom, bottom edge. So we're gonna move that by two pixels down, so increase the Y position by two, and this is gonna kind of make it aligned with this. And maybe on a second thought, since we have like this whole highlight, highlighted feature thing, maybe we don't want to differentiate these backgrounds. So actually I'm gonna remove this and let's see if that's better. Yeah, I think that's better, don't you think? Yeah, I think this, I think this is better. It's also a simple, simpler layout. So yeah, let's go for this. And also the alignment of the text is gonna be centered and also it's not gonna be Roboto Black, but Roboto Bold. I think that previously that was too strong. And so now we're gonna create five more pages, so that's page two, page three, page four, and page five, right? And the content of this is gonna be page two, page three, page four, page five. And then we're gonna change the state of this component to two, three, four, and five. If we now click through all of these, you know, kind of browse through these, you can see that it corresponds to the highlighted tab. Um, and so now what we want to do is link these individual buttons to their corresponding pages. And that's for every page and every button. So 
prototype, select this one, page two, smart animate. It's important that we select smart animate. Uh, let's actually test this now so that we can, right, yes. Yeah, so this is exactly what we want. When we press down and release, it's gonna take us to page two, auto animate, smart, smart animate, I mean. And now we're gonna just have to specify page three, page four, Figma remembers this settings, and then page five. And now on the second page, page one, page three, we want all of these pages to be accessible from every page. Page three, page one, page two, page four, and page five, and this one, page one, page two, page three, page four, nothing, page five, and lastly one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's see what, what this is now. Awesome, so this is how, how this works. We are on page one, when we go to page two, three, four, and five. So this is fully interactive, so from any page we can go to any page. And you can see that because we've selected auto animate, and this little cyan bar is moving, you know, it's, it's kind of animating, it's creating this cool animation where you're moving through individual pages and individual tabs. So, uh, this is also very powerful because uh, this navigation actually works. This is actually navigating us through our prototype and therefore this is usable for uh, your projects, for your websites and apps. And as I said, if you want to uh, download this source file, download the source file for, for this and use it in your own project, definitely check out the link below that it will take you to uh, the Mavi Design Store where I offer source files for my projects at very affordable prices. Thanks for tuning in. You are indeed very patient if you've watched this to the very end. So congratulations. Thank you and I will see you in the next one.